Now, um, as I go to introduce our speakers, I want all of y'all to understand this is one of the highlights of my day because I get to introduce an amazing person that I love to work with. Um, Raquel Grenet is a power to fly sales rock star. I'm super excited to, uh, to hear this conversation that she's about to have. Um, her uh, her co-speaker is going to be Latasha Williams. Um, Latasha has some very impressive alphabet salad after her name. I'm not going to pretend that I remembered all of these acronyms, even though I did look all of them up. Um, but Latasha is um, is an, a, a, an enterprise talent acquisition partner in the strategic pipelines and workforce partnerships um, di di the division of Kroger. Um, with over 14 plus years experience, um, Latasha has been noted by senior leaders at Fortune 500 co companies as a talent optimizer. She has held senior HR roles leading the full cycle talent acquisition and learning strategies. Now, Latasha is experienced in seamlessly aligning HR and business in key HR positions, often serving as a keynote speaker for workforce planning committees, focusing on developing talent at all levels. Um, Latasha and Raquel, I'm really excited to, to hear this chat. So I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Take it away. Okay. Can I unmute? Perfect. Thank you so much, Megan. The introduction was fantastic. Latasha, it's great to see you again. I got to speak with you this morning, and I'm very much looking forward to hearing what you have to say. So sure. why don't we start off by you telling us a little bit about yourself, what your role is, where you're based, and then a fun fact about yourself. Okay, awesome. But first, happy International Women's Day. Uh, yes. <laughs> very, very, exciting. Yeah. very excited to be here on a, a pivotal day. So again, thanks for the warm welcome and again to see you. So my name is Latasha Williams. As that intro was amazing, Meg, can you just follow me and just <laughs> do that everywhere? But me too. my my title is the Talent Acquisition Partner for Strategic Pipelines for the Kroger Family and Banner of Stores. And um, under this umbrella, I manage the creation, uh, the strategy and lifting of how we attract talent under a few specific verticals that I have, which includes early and next generation talent, starting from high school to college, uh, workforce readiness programs, robust internship experiences, and then I go to having a team under me diversifying the talent pipeline through partnerships with organizations. Um, and then I have a little bit of executive staffing that I have under my belt. So I am uh, virtually dialing in from rainy Atlanta, <laughs> rainy Atlanta, Georgia. I don't know what it's like where you're at. Uh, like with shared, I've been with Kroger for 11 years, but maybe about 16 years total of HR leadership experience. And I like to say, I don't know the full audience on here, but I like to say that I started my career hustling to the top from coffee cup to coffee cup because I literally started in college being a server. <laughs> so coffee. Um, and then really I started to hone in on the ability to showcase and highlight your value because that, if you think about it, really has no age, race, gender. That's you, all that you bring, uh, and all your abilities and all the awesomeness. And I think you asked me about a fun fact is, let's see, I probably read equivalent to maybe portions, 30 books a month, portions of them. I have this app that you can read like 15, 20 minutes of, of several books, but uh, doing that through audiobooks, so I'm a bit, of a, a bit of a generationally obsessed. So I love anything about generations in the workplace. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, well, let's start off about talking about goals. Um, how can a talent leader set both short-term and long-term goals for building a diverse pipeline? And in your role at Kroger, can you share any DEI goals that you currently have? Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Um, awesome. Great question, especially now in the, the landscape that we're in. So I definitely, I'll start off by saying this. I feel that um, understanding both industry trends and internal data of your own company, wherever you're at, uh, is really key because you have where we're trying to get to, which is industry, workforce planning, where you're at. And really, I think the role of a talent leader is to close the gap between the two. So understanding both of those metrics, I think, are very key and a good starting point. It allows you to be both reflective and strategic and also forward thinking. Um, I also will say this, I do think that diversity pipelines is 
really about finding the right people with varying abilities. And, and like I said earlier, all the awesomeness, finding people that have potential to fill key roles and really no matter what, where they bring, where they're at. And I think really that's a recipe for success for a talent leader um, is really to be able to adapt those market trends and think about it more in a now, next, later sort of format uh, with the goal of representation and inclusion is the long game, right? You want to be able to get to a point where you can visually see this. We don't have to look into these points, but again, the role of a talent leader is to help close the, the gap to get there and, and really building a pipeline that is diverse because you're from a talent attraction standpoint, you're trying to find all that talent and funnel them in into roles. Now, I think there's a few key pieces to that, including other areas outside of from a talent leader. So branding, uh, storytelling of companies sharing stories, which a lot of companies have, but definitely this is the first step. And then using that data to define and target your strategies that are, again, not biased, but the goal is diversifying the mix of how you find talent in different ways outside of maybe the traditional ways in which we do so. Okay. Can you share any specific DEI goals that you have? Yes, absolutely. I can definitely give you a sneak peek. You know, first, we're always looking for great talent here at Kroger for key leadership roles. But I'll definitely tell you my strategy under the, like I said, the pillars that I have is rooted in finding early talent, right places, varying places, non-traditional from an early talent perspective, whether it's in traditional large schools, medium schools, community colleges, certificate programs. So diversifying the reach in which we find talent is how I think we will be able to diversify the talent in which we bring in. So my first step is to do that. But I will tell you from a a company standpoint, we did um, do a lot of work and spoke to, I think it was millions of associates, community organizations across the nation, because Kroger has banners across the US, um, and really put all of that discovery into what we call framework for action. So a lot of my work is kind of derivative of that. Uh, it's five main focus areas that start at creating a more inclusive culture, developing diverse talent, advancing diverse partnerships, um, advancing equitable communities and reporting the progress on that. So as you can imagine from what I share, the piece of it I have is the diverse talent. So a lot of my goals are around that, diversifying the colleges and campuses in which we go to and getting deeper involvement and really cultivating value added partnership, even with organizations like Power to Fly. Yay. Okay, so now that we've discussed goals, how do you go about meeting your organization's larger goals in regards to building the diverse pipeline? You've mentioned some things, but yeah. what additional? Absolutely. So I guess what we'll even say as I hear that question, not only about really meeting the goals, but like I keep saying, diversifying the mix. I think there's a fine line. You don't want to get into a lens of quotas or anything like that. You're trying to really... Uh, diversify your strategy, how you find talent, and then providing inclusive experiences along the recruiting pipeline, if you will. So I've been focused in my team on building partnerships, like I said, with colleges and community organizations and breaking that down into a more tiered approach. So even as you asked me the question earlier about what talent leaders can do, is probably really being crystal clear around what are you trying to attract? And again, in that now, next, later, what do we need to solve for now? What's next? What's later? Um, and really breaking that down. And I will say that has uh, revealed itself or culminated in us doing a lot of great work to drive attraction for Kroger and all of the leadership roles from entry and beyond through things like symposium. So we held our first symposium last year. It was HBCU and historically Black College and University and HSI, Hispanic Serving Institution Symposium. So um, it was actually about a four hour day, which is another strategy, bringing students in. And it was really geared to not only highlighting the company, but targeting key topics and things that students wanted to learn that they that were at and graduate graduating from culturally diverse institutions. So it was really a pipeline, how to uncover your value, even though you have a little bit, how to change directions when that's different from your, your major, your degree, and kind of what does that look like in an organization? So 
our goals have been around um, having value added events and engagement such as that. Um, also to expand our partnerships with not just HBCUs, but culturally diverse institutions across the United States. Like I said, we're spread out from, uh, like I said, rainy, but sunny, eventually Atlanta, all the way to Alaska. So West Coast, you know, started diving into institutions such as tribal and Pan-Asian and all the different, you know, type of diversity based colleges that you can find. So when I said earlier, how you uh, diversify the mix and the strategy, then that will lead to diversity. So we've increased our partnerships, but uh, value added partnerships. So not just as an employer that you just go on campus, how can we help further what the institution is doing or the organization like other ones that we've partnered with. So we've done that. And then um, also focus around just talent attraction partnerships and programs, whether it's from a veteran standpoint or women uh, focused organizations, or even the lens of um, neurodiversity and our abilities in the workplace. So we've wrapped our arms around that, uh, as well as high school workforce readiness focus areas. So those are just some of the goals that, that my team and I have been working on that helps support what I showed, what I shared with you about the framework for action, which is the larger goal. Fantastic. Okay, now that you've identified your goals and your strategy, how do you measure diversity at the organization and what KPIs would you suggest? Nice. And like I said, so imagine a world long term <laughs> success would be that we didn't need measurements, you could see it at all levels from entry all the way on up and then you can really focus on those inclusive work environments, which like I shared, that's really what we're on the journey for. Um, and, you know, we want to make sure that we're uh, attracting diversity from a recruiting standpoint where people can be their authentic self. So I think from the measure of, of what you asked me, just some KPIs I think are impactful is measuring if you're at a company or you have this sort of data, dimensions of diversity. So generational, told you I love generational metrics, um, but other factors in that as well and anything additional that may show up in if your company does um, associate surveys or yearly insights, any of those sort of things that gives you the data, but also the voice of your people. Sometimes that's uh, definitely a, um, a key there in the, in the annual surveys or in any of the yearly insights. Another KPI I think is important is measures of success in performance reviews and seeing how that there's a lot of companies that track just the difference in that and where uh, where high performers lie and, and all of that good stuff. Promotion criteria I think is something a good KPI to take a look at. And in measurement from a diversity recruiting standpoint, measurement of diversity in your applicant pools and, and how you do some outreach. So those are just some of the ones that come to mind. Okay, so you mentioned the voice of the employees. That brings me to asking, can you talk a little bit about your employee resource groups and can having a diversity, uh, can having a diversity, uh, diverse pipeline, but also retaining and supporting a diverse workforce, does the employee resource group have a function in that? Oh my gosh, I think they play a huge, and I even think I know they play a huge function um, in that and huge partnerships. So definitely that should be probably part of all strategies as uh, companies are different levels and lifting up. We've lifted up quite a few from young professionals and, and on, but I definitely believe uh, ERGs play a pivotal role in hearing the voice, the needs and the wants of the groups that they support and in partnering across the organization. So specifically with, uh, with talent attraction or, or recruitment side of the business, because they could really partner on recruitment strategies. So usually in those groups, they're talking about uh, culture building, value adds, and also the recruitment locally in, in areas or broadly for an entire company. So I think that partnership with the groups are very, very pivotal uh, in the success of, of companies in that now, next, and, and later plan. And you know, like I said, they're full of communities of the voices of diverse leaders within an organization. And they usually have a pulse on communities in which they serve wherever companies are locally. So really, I think that partnership, again, is very pivotal in bringing about meaningful change 
And in our instance, we're talking about from a talent attraction standpoint. And I think also to um, the partnership in yearly planning or quarterly planning that these groups do. You know, a lot of them do things like bringing in leaders from across an organization that reflects, uh, you know, the population in which they serve and, and just being heavily involved in that yearly planning, I think is key. And then lastly, um, to kind of summarize the answer to that question is pressure testing, I think even company goals and objectives. Like I will say, even for our approach, when I talked about my scope that I have is even, so we're thinking about here's what we want to do. We're looking at data and insights and those sort of things. And then bringing that to ERGs and say, pressure test this. Are we going the right direction? What are we missing and how can we partner moving forward? So to answer that pivotal, pivotal role. <laughs> Okay, and you mentioned universities and colleges. Mm -hmm. What about encouraging the next generation and what approach do you have to working with those universities and colleges? Ooh, absolutely. And I might have hit on that a little bit, but value added yeah. partnership is really what the focus has been with colleges and universities and even going to a non-traditional sort of sense, whether it's two year, any of those sort of um ways or areas where people can be upskilled and educated. We want to uh, partner in different ways, but also been focusing a little bit more on not just the traditional career fairs, but also beyond the fair. So how do we partner with organizations on campus is key. And that's really how you can help encourage the next generation, be a part of the groups that, uh, that are formed on campus, uh, which there are plenty. I mean, colleges have hundreds and hundreds of groups that you can even connect I think about your previous question, the ERGs and, and furthering that as well. So beyond the career fair, whether that's partnerships with professors um, or any of the any of the other groups on campus. So really, that's what we've been focusing on and um, on campus and, and at colleges is to be able to do that a little bit more and also bringing next generation into the fold. We've been able to be a part of where, where some of the initiatives and things that the company's working with, they're partnering with professors and making it a capstone project where students can give us their real true feedback. They can see that their feedback is helping to make meaningful change inside of the company. So it's not just a project. They actually get to see that. So I think that's ways where we can start to be closer and closer. And I've even done things like do focus groups on campus. You know, if you want to hear the voice of next generation, then go to where they're at and ask them about their thoughts. They're not shy. I'm still in that millennial. I know, I know we got Gen Z and maybe one more after that, but um, I think not being afraid to be able to have focus groups, um, even in your partnerships as well. Oh, great. Okay. So now looking back, what DEI initiatives have you found to be the most successful in your career? Oh, man, all good questions. I love this. So I would say I summarized it to the biggest one is um, a DI initiative under the realm of mentorship. That has been very, very key. Falls into the realm of, uh, of DEI, but also abroad because I've been able to grow my career as a, a young professional by having mentors that um, are also, you know, not only just look like me and, and have similar experiences, but also those allies in the workplace of so people that are in different roles and, and males, you know, in my sense, because I'm a female and, you know, just being able to have that perspective in the form of mentorship from across the board. I've had mentors maybe at all levels and, and all varying type of, uh, of diversities from abilities and beyond. So mentorship has definitely been the biggest success. So when I go back, if I link it to the first question about what talent leaders can do is make sure that uh, mentorship program is very diverse, especially and robust, especially for your diverse leaders, because it's going to be very key in, in moving them forward. And also for uh, next generation leaders to help close that, that any skill gaps or, or help to upskill them along the way. Well, that is fantastic. Now I've run out of questions, but is there anything <laughs> else that you would like to share with the audience in regards to having a diverse pipeline and building that diverse pipeline? 
I love this. I feel like we could just, we could just continue talking. We can just ask me <laughs> questions. We'll, we'll do some planning with everyone. I don't know, but. Oh, they're going to um, cut me off at some point. Trust <laughs> me. Cut us off. Oh man. Um, I mean, I've shared a lot. I think definitely the, the key there is, like I said, being very strategic about um, initiatives and, you know, people don't want to feel like it's just something that a company's planning maybe just right now. This is a part of the culture and the way we attract in my sense, the way we attract talent and how do we help make sure that our approaches are diverse. So by default, you get diverse talent along the way. So definitely um, that, that would be my feedback and my only add. Perfect. Wait, wait, one more question. When I spoke with you a little earlier, you were talking about the fact that you actually reach out to high schools as well. Yes. I don't think many companies have taken that initiative. <laughs> nice. Yes, that is one amazing thing. So, uh, and Kroger is pretty unique, which I really love. Um, I know this, you know, this similar story is maybe in other companies, but a key staple of Kroger is that it's a lot of leaders, the saying is come for a job, stay for a career. It's a lot of leaders that started off in high school. And can you imagine, imagine a world where only one job, but you've had different roles in the midst of that. And you started at 14 and 15 <laughs> and been able to progress your career. And now you're presidents and VPs and all those different roles. So yes, our efforts of in, in high schools, I'm looking to expand that even further. You know, when you talk about even diversity, equity, inclusion, think about that generation. Who I know there's some names that are being uh, thrown around for that. They're born in a world where diversity, that's not a thing, right? It's a way of life. Uh, and, and they don't really know the difference between that. So we want to make sure, you know, when you think about the long game of strategy that your company has a diverse pipeline, that's definitely the place to, to start. Well, that's fantastic. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you this afternoon. Absolutely. Likewise. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think there is a little bit of time left. Meg, I'm not sure how much time we have left in the session, but I do want to turn that back over because I've asked her everything I can think of. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. The brain. Um, yeah, we've got about eight minutes left in the session. So, um, Latasha, one thing that I'm curious about, and Raquel, you covered so much ground. Thank you so much for this. <laughs> Um, Latasha, what is one question about this subject that you never get asked and you think people should be talking about more? That's a good question. Ooh, nice. Oh, just one. Oh man, Meg. Okay. So I think one miss is deeper diving into, um, generational mix and how to cultivate a multi-generational workforce. Uh, there are lessons from generations and leaders that have already, they have the wisdom, they grew their career, and then you have the next generation of talent that, you know, wants to be in those sort of roles and be upskilled, and they actually pair very, very well. So I think sometimes uh, in diversity, equity, inclusion conversations, just that generational mix and how to cultivate that in a workforce that has about five or six generations there. So um, yeah. definitely that would be my top one. I remember um, I, I sat in on a past chat, this has to be at least a year ago now, where um, the speaker was talking about how we are now faced with the largest spread, the largest like, you know, kind of number of different generations still in play in the workforce. Yes. And that really resonated with me because you're right. Like we do have you know, kind of the, the boomers that are, you know, sort of starting to, to kind of age out a little bit, obviously I'm not trying to push y'all off in a nice flow. Yes. But they're wanting but, to come back though. So that yes, is like yes. when you think about workforce planning and what better way to, you know, loop in the fact of wisdom, but that also can help you when I talked earlier about those now, next later plans, when it comes to attraction strategies, like leverage, I would say a, a miss leverage companies are they're diverse. They have leaders, whether it's ERGs or any other, you know, diverse leaders of the organization. I mean, definitely that, you know, let's strategize there. You have representation, just like you said, of all of those generation and mixes in the workplace. Yeah, of course. Um, now, I know we only have six more minutes left, and I want to make sure that we're conscious of time. So if you all have any questions that you would like to ask of Latasha, please, please feel free to submit those in the chat down there. Um, I, okay, so I always like this question. Please feel free to tell me if you don't, like, you don't want to answer it. But um, when, when did you decide that this was your, this was going to be your thing? This, that, that being in HR and working towards these like DEI goals and building a truly diverse pipeline, when did that really like crystallize for you? 
Oh, good question. I don't know if I chose it. I think it chose me. I think when yeah. you are progressing as a, um, at least for me, just as a, a young leader in the workplace, and, and really that is a way of life. Think about the dimensions of diversity and it's beyond the surface, kind of end up choosing me. I mean, early on, I just realized as a, as a young leader, well, if I want to be in roles very, very fast, which, you know, that's what <laughs> the yeah. millennials want to, the wisdom is in, you know, earlier generations. So I need to wrap my arms around and follow and shadow and upskill and just be a lot more aggressive about what that, what that means and learn uh, what I want to learn um, and also be able to do some reverse mentoring. What can, what value can I provide to you as well? So really it's kind of been inverted in that. So I was able to say, Hey, I would like to learn what's the value I can provide to you. And then I just end up being able to do that over and over and over again, which has led me into roles that were heavily people focused in, in nature. Uh, the goal is that, you know, when we're leaders of others, no matter what our abilities are, age, race, what we look like, where we come from, we're part of people's lives. Uh, and that's job and that's beyond job. So we have, we have a, a very high obligation to be able to do that. And the way we do that is in our roles, diversifying, training, upskilling, all of those sort of things. So I've just kind of stayed in those sort of roles because it brings, um, it, it, it very fulfilling and it brings definitely satisfaction and you can see the effort of your work. We just talked about high school. So I can say we were in high schools and I can come back 20 years later and those leaders will be, you know, in roles. And, and I, know I, yeah. interact, I know I interacted with them. So yeah, it kind of chose me and I just uh, continue down that path. Uh, it, HR is definitely an area where you can provide value. So if you love doing that, and like I said, it's not just the job, it's the whole person, then yeah. that's where you want to be. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. So in our last three minutes, my, okay. Again, I feel bad. These are kind of my favorite questions to ask people. And I feel like I'm putting you on the spot hugely, but, um, all right. So, uh, let's say, you know, parallel universe, whatever you win the lottery tomorrow. What is one thing that you would still keep going back to work to see accomplished? Nice. Uh, I won the lottery tomorrow. That'd be a great day, by the way. Right? I would still be at work. I'm manifesting that for all I of would, us. <laughs> I would still be at work doing this. Like I said, it's more about when you're in HR, your legacy building. So what I would like to see in place is the continued focus on next generation talent and how to build not only pipelines, but ways of development and, and really have a strategy around that piece of it. I would love to see. And with my lottery wins, I would still want to do that. <laughs> Good. I love that. I love that energy. Wait, um, I've got right. one more. Wait, wait. You I've got one more? more. Go for yeah. it. Real, real quick. How can organizations make room for upward mobility while allowing more seasoned employees to maintain their roles? Um, often people leave because they just didn't see a place for themselves there. Yeah, that's a really great question. Ooh, in the last couple of minutes. Okay, let me see if I can maybe summarize what I think. I guess I'll go back to um, strategy and being very intentional when I said about just the generational perspectives and the mentorship and beyond, and how can we cultivate environments uh, where you know people don't feel that way, uh, where there is room for mobility. I've seen a lot of studies and even organizations that are even those that retire. How do you bring them back in more of a mentorship capacity or yeah. a consultant? consultant or advising sort of capacity. So, um, you know, they can still share their, their wisdom, but I think internally you can do that as well. Um, and that's really in your performance strategies, um, in your training development strategies. I think that kind of falls in between there. Um, but I think, like I said, to be very intentional about what does that mean for your organization, understanding the data and, you know, the percentages and what that needs to look like. So you can be more targeted in that. Great. <laughs> I love that. And you're, it's a really, it's a great question because, you know, places that have this great culture, they do, you know, people stick around and it can feel, you know, a little bit uncomfortable if you are part of the, you know, maybe not, I'm not, I'm not in the, the entry level anymore, but like, if you are in kind of that in, in flux position, it can feel really weird. Right. Cause you're like, I don't want to push this person out, but also where do I then fit? Um, so I love that. I love that you address that from both an external and an internal perspective. That's awesome. Absolutely. And I think even organizations looking at just work in general, you know, when, a, when we think about next generation, 
you know, just because we're in a gig workforce environment, there's ways to do gig like sort of thing or, or really cultivate that entrepreneurship spirit, entrepreneurship when it's inside the company, but ways to cultivate that so people still see themselves, even if they're a younger generation. Yes, I absolutely so I love that. think we're out of time, but there was one audience question that came in. Just um, specifically, Latasha, do you have any suggestions on people, on how people operate? Ooh, actually, Raquel, I'm so sorry. We're going to get cut off. Sorry, okay, sorry. going to get cut we'll, off. We'll, okay. we'll send like, I can try to answer Latasha it in later. the chat. I'll maybe <laughs> yeah, I'll go ahead and answer the chat. Um, <laughs> and then if, if y'all have stuck with us this long, thank you so much.